Hey everybody, it's Kyle Van Voris. I'm here with Dan Musser. Hello, Dan. How you doing? What's up? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. This is great because the competitive mindset has been on a little hold for two weeks. Events have been going so crazy. We've been very busy, but we're back. We're ready for action. Who better than the man who got first place at AGP Dallas? How's it feel, man? Uh, it feels great. I am very excited, even though my voice doesn't sound it because I'm kind of tired, just like you are. <laughs> right. But uh, I feel great. It's awesome. I, I had one goal in mind. I, I booked a plane ticket to from Ohio, a thousand miles away, to go to Texas because it's just like the only event that I really had time for. Right. And, well, it worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got there. Well, uh, something that uh, some people might not know you from Magic, uh, you're – a magic pro is that fair to say or, or am I uh it's base? that's too much honestly like i define a pro kind of as a person who you know makes their living just off of what they win or endorse right uh and i definitely can't do that so <laughs> i would go something like semi-pro or aspiring pro maybe okay that's solid well i think you have enough credentials to uh, wear either of those titles you have one uh win at star city games you have eight tops um, you got third place at GP Atlanta in 2015, six pro tour appearances. You just exactly. are all over the place. So <laughs> exactly. yeah, definitely better than your average. And I think, um, I mean, the, the, I think the first thing that deserves to be spoken about here is the difference between force of will and magic. Cause we see a lot of magic players who come into force of will and they just crush, right? They just do very, very well. And do you yep. think that's because they're used to high level tournaments or do you think the game is similar enough to where all the same skills carry over or both? Well, the games are certainly similar. Uh, I, I tell people when they think about getting in force of will that play magic, I'm like, you're going to know, you know 85% of the rules probably, or some, some very high percentage, right. you know, very, there's not that many differences. The differences are subtle. I think that if you have been conditioned to play high level competitive magic, and you step into force will you're gonna you're gonna be like a, a lion in the what whatever den i don't know some den you're a lion, <laughs> you're a lion in the jungle i guess you're like you're gonna be very well off right uh a lot of the force will players i notice come from a more casual background or they come from uh, uh other games that are just don't have the competitive uh maturity that magic magic has uh, not to say magic's the best or anything, it's just where I come from, so it's my comparison level. But right. yeah, I think I think I'm definitely advantaged coming from a highly competitive magic background. Yeah, absolutely. I think um I mean I think both of them, like if you just use logic, someone who's very comfortable competing at a high level, uh, already has a, a strong advantage in a tournament environment, right? Sure, yeah. And then you mix that in with with knowing a lot of the basics. But I think regardless of that, though, there, there's still preparation that needs that's involved, right? You, it's not sure. like any Magic player can grab a deck and all of a sudden they're great. Um, I want to talk because it's kind of unique how how you per, um, prepared for um, for Dallas here. Yeah, so <laughs> I, think it's fun. The, uh, I booked a ticket probably two weeks before the event. I had planned on going to AGP Richmond because that's only like five hours drive for me. Right. Pretty pretty close. Pretty lucky. Uh, obviously, we know how that ended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not well. Yeah. I didn't get as screwed as uh, we got real screwed. David. David yeah, Hartley. David Hartley. He <laughs> flew from England. <laughs> but uh, but needless to say, that was like the best weekend for me to go because I still value Magic tournaments pretty highly and want to go to those. Right. Uh, of course, it was kind of like my my side hobby. I guess. <laughs> um, your but, hobby uh, of your hobby. Yeah. So the, so the week before, I booked the ticket two weeks before the event, started talking with uh, Zach, who had won Pasadena, probably might have been that weekend or the weekend before. Yeah. Um, you know, he played pre-nerf Reflect Alice World. And I was like, I think, even though they nerfed it, Alice World's probably still great. Right. Um, and then I got a little scared the week right before when the Necro deck won. Right. I was like, oh man, I don't want to play Lancelot. I hate red decks. <laughs> it's magic. I just try never to play a red deck. Right. So I was like, I still think Alice the World's great. Let me talk to some more people. I talk with Adam Riser. Uh, he thinks it's pretty good. He says, go talk to Anton. Anton's been playing Alice the World just this whole time anyway. I was like, okay, right. I'll talk to Anton. 
Anton's like, yeah, it's great. Play it. Um, what's your list? I showed him my list. He's like, that's really close. I mean, he, I, I decided to main deck fire robes. They were already main decking fire robes. Right. Uh, seemed like a good innovation after a necro deck. Necro to knights wins. Yeah. Necro <laughs> lance wins. Uh, so I don't have anyone to play with, though. I mean, I could get on Skype like this, and like we could show our little desktop to play. <laughs> that's too much work. So yeah. I just grabbed both the Necro deck and my Elseworld deck, and I just yeah. sat on my bed for four hours a night the week uh, the week leading up to the tournament and just play both sides in the matchup. <laughs> What's so I funny, did. what cracks me up about this story, too, is it reminds me, like... Um, there's always like some classic like comedy or something where like the nerdy kid is playing chess against himself, you know, like <laughs> I just have this image of you just like playing cards against yourself and trying to best your other brain. <laughs> I, I outplayed myself quite a bit and, and I made various large mistakes. Like <laughs> I would like, I think I, I, I so in the, and when you're playing reflect, right. You have to like, and you're playing against the red deck, you have to not get burned out. Right. You can't get fetal, whatever right. fetal, outer world yeah. card where you can't get thundered right and so i made the mistake of on my end step i flipped back to refrain or reflect from refrain uh -huh. and i got burned out by my other self i was like why'd you do that dan right <laughs> i forgot my other deck had i actually forgot it had fetal movement in it and i like just ripped it the one turn and i was like oh kill you dan <laughs> that was dumb yeah, that, that must be <laughs> it's just funny because then your other self has to go, Oh, I need to capitalize yeah. on that misplay. <laughs> right. I did. I top I I only because I top decked a card I forgot I had. So Right. <laughs> You're like, oh this one's good. This wins me yeah. the game. Kill you in response. Yeah, that's super funny. I think uh and what's funny is that four hours a night playing against yourself is probably more than what a lot of people do. Uh just going into an event <laughs> already. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I I mean people I, I don't have the luxury of having super competitive force of will players right. around me, uh locally at least. Yeah. So it's kind of just you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, absolutely. I think um I, I mean I think you did what you had to do. I mean four hours a night's a lot of time and I don't know if a lot of people commit to that. But it goes in, like in my book at least it, it shows that even if a player's good, like when you look at some of the top players, um you know, Zach Tufford, like you mentioned earlier, or Adam Reiser. Um, these are guys who actually, they put time in, right? They work. And I, I just don't know if you get ever get to a point to where you don't have to put that effort in in order to perform well. What, what do you think about that? Are you always, like, if there's an event you want to do it well at, you'll put a lot of time and effort into it? Uh, it certainly depends on the level of event, uh, how much time I've had before the event, and what you know, format the event is in. So say, say I was going to an AGP again this weekend. Right. I would not put a lot of time into it because I'd already put the time in. Right. Uh, I would probably play something very similar. I'd probably make small changes because, you know, me and Anton and the third place guy all played Alice's World. Right. So I'd say, I'd be like, okay, I need to be Alice's World. What are some tech cards against Alice's World? Right. You know, we could play main deck Barrier. We could main, main deck the Pumpkin Witch. Uh, we could play less robes. Uh, main because well they're not very good in the mirror right. uh, and I would make those few changes and, and that's about it that's all I would do now having going into AGP Dallas I had not played with my deck a ton I've played I've played Alice's World a bunch but I haven't played you know maybe that specific version a ton never played against uh, Necromancy the Undead Lord never played against that card so I needed to get used to that kind of stuff right. um, so it just depends on I think your comfort level if, if you're going in and you've never played the format, play it a ton. If you've played the format a bunch, you could cool it a little bit, do some theory crafting, talk with some smart people about specific card choices, and that's all you really need to do. Yeah, no, I think yeah, I think that's really, really important. And you perform so well, and I think you have a really strong understanding on how the deck works and how it functions um, at its core, but also for different matchups. Like, obviously, it's a great deck. Um yeah. That being said, so I, I want to speak a little bit about the Alice's World deck itself because yeah. I think um, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about how the whole thing's how it's played, even right. Okay. Like I just think I think if you look at it on the surface, it's a deck that you think would go one way. Um, for example, you drop a bunch of creatures, and Alice's World seems like such a strong card, so you just want to drop a bunch of cre creatures and 
activate Alice's world, right? And then win that way. Um, there's a lot more intricacies in that. And I know that just from talking to Anton and whatnot. Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Like what are some of the things that you that you find yourself running into a lot when you're playing Alice's world, regardless of what deck you're playing? Okay. So when you go into a matchup with Alice's world, you got to ask yourself maybe, uh, this might be too generalized, but like three different questions. One, are they playing the card Sign of the Future? Uh, if so, you cannot be overextending your big creatures, Gwyber and Adam Brawley, right. uh, into a board such that you have like three cats, an elf, and Morgiana, and those two cards. Right. If you do that, your best cards are gone. Right. <laughs> so you want to obviously manage your board in such a way that you don't have three more creatures than your opponent. That means only playing one Gwyber instead of the two you can slam, then do that. Right. Second card you need to play around is Flame King Shout. Uh, your, your setup turn. The turn before you play those big monsters usually involves you playing Elf, Morgiana, Cat, Cat, whatever. So if you just leave all the creatures on the battlefield and you don't play your Adam Brawley and your Gwyber, you're going to get Flame King shot and be very sad. Right. <laughs> right. So if you play around those two cards, that's great. The next thing you really need to do is make sure that you don't play into, I don't know what you call it, but when... You, you get to the turn of the game where your opponent's ready to flip the refrain. You need to make sure your next turn, if you plan on doing something like Alice's Worlding, you don't give them the chance to respond to something. So, like, what I mean is, you're getting to that magical eighth, eighth mana. Right. Either four creatures, four lands, six different creatures, sorry, resonators, right. uh, two lands, what, whatever, whatever combination it is. But you want to, like, optimize your turn, so you want to, like, play some guys before you do all that and, and get the most out of your turn. But you don't have the luxury to do that a lot of time because if a smart refrain player will, you know, when you go to play like your second to last creature uh, that gets you to that eighth number, they'll bounce your, they, they should bounce like your one guy, your Morgiana right. or whoever. Um, if you watch the very small amount of coverage I was on, uh, I think my, my feed got cut short even in the third game. There was not much to watch. Um, you see me bouncing Morgiana's. I, I think that's really sm I don't know if that's really smart, but I think it's really smart because <laughs> Morgiana is just so nuts in the matchup. Managing Mor Morgiana is 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 pivotal. You you have to you have to fancy cat it or familiar cat it or whatever. Right, you gotta right, right. you gotta pop it. I think I think wasting counters just to bounce it's it's a fine plan too. So I, honestly, Alice's world there's only two in the deck. I don't even <laughs> think it's it's not even close to the best card in the deck. Right, right. Um, I don't think it's a race to slamming Alice's world. Alice's world is the card that lets you like kind of seal the yeah. win right. but I, I don't even know i don't think the number of alice worlds i cast that that weekend were was above out of 12 ma matches i played i don't think the number is above six seven right and not cast many alice's worlds yeah i think that's something that a lot of people don't understand just looking at the list off the bat right because it's called alice's world that's what we call the yeah. deck and and i think it's very easy to just assume that cards like flame king shout are a total blowout like <laughs> How does the deck beat Flame King Shout? Or how right. does the deck beat Sign of the Future? Um, it's just played very different than I just think, like, right off the bat, you'd understand. You know? You see, in uh, Anton and I's finals, the first game, neither of us come out the gates. We're both scared. Yeah. Uh, we're both playing around getting signed out of the game or whatever. Right. Uh, we both just kind of very casually lead Elf, Morgiana. Right. And it's like three turns before even a, a, either of us even gets, like, Adam Broly or Gwyber in the, in the battlefield. Uh, yeah, we were just trying to play real slow, killing each other's morgues, um, right. which was something I kind of had an advantage about. Uh, our Anne and I collaborated a lot for the event, and our lists were very similar. But I had three familiar with the Holy Wind; he had two. Mm -hmm. uh, he had, uh, I think, a Law of Silence was his other card. Yeah, yeah. Which I am not like terribly big fan of. Right. Uh, but having the third cat was great because it gave me another answer to his his morgue. Interesting. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think you need to play the deck, unfortunately, conservatively and slow, which is bad in an already right. slow format where everyone has to activate their re uh, refrain a hundred times. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> uh, I think to play the deck optimally, you have to be slow, which is unfortunate to make yeah. all the right plays. Yeah, I agree. I think I think so too. And, and watching those mirror matches, um, I mean, like I was watching you and Anton play on stream, and they're just nail biters. Um, 
I can see how maybe they get a little dull if you've watched a ton of them, but it's, I, I think it's a very skillful deck, right? It requires a really high level of um, of foresight. It takes a lot of, of planning, yeah. um, so much so that sometimes you're like, oh, shoot, he screwed himself up two turns ago or whatever. Every, every turn of the game, I'm like, man, I could have done that turn better. Right. Man, and I, I'm saying that, and I'm winning. Right, like, right. I don't know. I mean, that means my opponents are either not as lucky or not playing as well as I am. And I, and I know I'm making mistakes and right. I'm just, I'm like, man, I could have, I could have gotten one more creature on the battlefield or I could have, right. I could have, I don't know. I could have put a better card on bottom with my, uh, reflect more Guiana abilities. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just, I'm noticing mistakes I'm making. I don't know what opponent, my opponents are doing, but <laughs> it must I be think, worse uh, mistakes, right? It's, it, even with all the mistakes I know that I made, and I, I still was able to win the event, the deck played... If, if you were able to have the endurance to play 12 rounds over two days, uh, where your first day is, like, I don't know, it was 14 hours or something? We played from 10.30 to 11.30. What's that, 13 hours? Wow. Uh, it was rough. <laughs> it was much easier. Yeah. Those three rounds. It's great. Yeah, it's way better. Um, yeah, it's, it's an endurance test for sure. Right hard now what would you say like you as a player to sidestep a little bit here where, where do you think your strengths lie um are you i mean some people i talked to are that you're very good at deck building um and they're solid players and there's some people who are just really good players and they're a little bit weaker on deck building would you say like you're all around strong in a lot or uh, do you lean in one direction uh i think my my technical play and rules knowledge is pretty high uh i'm i'm Probably not the best deck builder. I would say I'm, not, I'm a much better, much better player, and I'm a good what I like to call week two deck builder. Uh, so that means as soon as the format comes out, like as soon as the the new set is out and right. new decks are out, and I see what the first week meta game is, right. I I can focus on those decks. But yeah. I I'm not very good. If it's a brand new format, mm-hmm. I would just play like the best old format deck. Right. So whatever was best in the last format, whose cards are still around. You know, we haven't had a rotation here, but I think we're going to get one eventually. Yeah, so one day. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's not, not good at building new decks. Yeah, I think I think it could be pretty challenging just in general. Like, how do you build? <laughs> you have no idea how these cards are are going to end up falling together. I think a lot of people just will focus on a very like aggressive strategy right off the bat. Um, I good think plan. Some, some people do what you do, which is stick to something that they know. Um, I think yeah, that's I'm a big good deal. Part of that too. Yeah, Even you, if what you know may not be the best deck, if you know it better than the best deck, right. it might be best to play it. That's true. However, you shouldn't play a deck in this format that doesn't contain the rule or reflect if you want to win the tournament. Right. Um, even if you think something else is better, it's just not. Reflect is just insane. You know, everyone said, have said has said their piece on reflect, but until they ban it, honestly. I, I've I've looked at the new cards a bit, but mm-hmm. and not not as much as most people. But I don't think any of the rulers still hold a light to reflect. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. I think I think reflect is a card that really rewards um, like technical players. Oh yes, a lot. You know, and I think um, so for someone like yourself with a lot of competitive experience and, and leans more towards technical play and rules knowledge, a card like reflect reflects like a godsend right you're like oh perfect I'll just i pull. value consistency over right. over power most of the time even if you know if you cut your most powerful card to add a card that's more consistent i am a big fan of that and reflect mm-hmm. may not be the most like powerful ruler but it's the right. most flexible has the most options and gives the i think gives the, the better player the better chance of winning um just because you have i mean the card literally has eight abilities you know yeah <laughs> judgment three abilities right flip back three abilities like right. it's, it's crazy uh it's I don't, I, for people that know magic it's it's every player starts with jace the mind sculpture it's it's right. better than that actually but I, I actually people that i explain how force will works competitively now is i tell them no one has a ruler actually everyone just has this subset of eight abilities they get to do every turn <laughs> and there's no ruler anymore it's, it's a rulerless game right <laughs> yeah it's interesting that you say that i was talking to um Brian Liu was on this a bunch of episodes ago sure. and we were talking about reflect right when it first came out and he was talking about um, how it's dynamic right and and that's where its power comes from it's not necessarily that like what you're saying it's the most powerful ruler it's just, it's just the most dynamic you have a lot of options with it 
yep. which um, I mean, just to speak to what you're saying, I, I think is something that even in the future, like you look at and it's like, yeah, we can look at, I don't know what uh, Gil or Kaguya, like those are some pretty powerful yeah. effects. You can pay one moon and like stop a cancel or whatever, an automatic ability, like stuff like that's really strong. Um, that being said, you have this other ruler that just takes whatever 40 cards you put together and makes you be able to find what you're looking for faster if you play 40 of the best cards you're going to see the best cards every time like i just think there's a lot of play there that um may allow be the better player to continue playing reflect as a ruler in the, in the next oncoming sets here and um it might i think it still will dominate the format yeah i think it, i i would be shocked if one of the either, what is it primo there's a world tree, right. there's Kaguya, and there's one I can't pronounce, Shi Yu or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shion or something. Yeah. Shion, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just, I would be shocked if, I mean, people are going to try them out. They're all right. cool. They all do awesome. Like, you know, the tree thing is, is hilarious. It's Dude, funny. that's my favorite card. How there's a awesome combo. <laughs> what, there's a combo that you can, like, pay a million life right. and get uh, Alice with a sword on it or something. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, that's, how are you going to find all those cards without Reflect, though? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need you need the filter ability right. to find all those pieces. There's right. so many. What about boarding know. into another ruler uh, when you're reflect? Did you do that at all this weekend? Or are you just like kind of against that? We put we put Blazer and Death Sides in our board just in case we found anything that was rogue or any you know oh, Bahamut yeah. decks. Uh, you know Blazer's good at slaying all those things, but yeah. I literally played against twelve reflect decks. So <laughs> jeez, <laughs> didn't need to board board uh, Blazer at all. <laughs> Actually, it was the only card in my sideboard I did not board in. Oh, that's crazy. Blazer. Well, then here's a question uh, A question for you, and I think um, you know we can, we can close on this because I, I feel like the people watching this, it's not all, every time they get to just hear someone who has been so successful in Magic uh, just talk about Force of Will, um, okay. and, I, and I love the perspective there. Uh, being a very like technical player and, and having a really strong background in, in Magic, it's a very similar game. What would you say in Force of Will are some of the – Me mechanics I, I i can't think of the right word like what are some of the more important like techniques or um fundamentals that someone would need to work on in order to become better at force of will okay so in tournament play what you really need to foc focus on especially in uh, a game as i call this game a lot it's a lot of hard work Uh, doing all the stuff you need to do in the game because it's so precise and technical. Right. And the way the rules work in this game are very mm, rigid, I guess. Right. So uh, being op like communicating with your opponent is very key. Uh, if you're interested in playing the Alice World deck with Morgiana, Reflexibility, Cheshire Cat, uh, Familiar, Adam Brawley, these cards all have triggers that need to be resolved very, very precisely right so right. if you have morgiana out which is your best card in your deck and you play a cheshire cat you're going to see six cards you draw three you put two on bottom you draw three you put right. two on bottom you put one on top uh, every time i did that in the tournament it might have been annoying to my opponent but i was like all right first draw put one on bottom second draw put one on bottom now i gotta put one on top i was like vocalizing it every right, time because right. uh the, the rules in this game are so harsh that if, if I did not put a card back on top or I put a third card on bottom or something like that, like that's a severe, a severe rules violation. Right. And it's so easy to make those, those mistakes. Even yeah. Anton got a game loss in the top eight right. for resolving. A, a, he put a card back on top and then switched it with another card. I, I can't remember exactly yeah, what happened, but he just, like boom, game loss. Uh, and he, yeah. he was one of the best players there. Yeah. Maybe the second best player there. <laughs> but, uh, Could be that. <laughs> but it's just your technical play needs to be on point. Uh, second thing I would say, another piece of advice, do not let your emotions take hold of you while playing this game. Uh, you have a lot of control over your opening hand. You have a lot of control, especially since you're probably playing reflect uh, over what cards you get to see and what cards you don't. So, uh, you know, take, Don't take too much time, but take a little bit of time, make those decisions correctly. Uh, and when, you know, things don't go your way, just try not to like go on tilt. Tilt is a tournament killer. Uh, it'll just ruin your day. Um, just if you make a mistake, own up to it, learn from it. Uh, one of the things I used to do and, and still try and do sometimes, um, but I forget to, uh, is after every match, win or lose, sit down, look at my life pad or whatever that I was writing notes on. And just try and review what happened, what went wrong, 
what am I? What let me beat my opponent? Or how did I lose to my opponent? Did yeah. my opponent make a pivotal error that let me capitalize on them? Can I make sure I make no, never make that error? Or right. did I make that error? Interesting. What are these things that what, that can change? Uh, try and do it win or lose. That's hard to do because yeah. you know when you lose, you yeah. want to be sad. <laughs> yeah. Tell your friends how badly you got beat. Right. Uh, the bad beat story circle. That's yeah. always a thing. Misery loves company. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And try not to blame your losses on things outside your control. If you can't control it, it's just part of the thing. You just, you know, some variance happens. Sometimes you will hit, uh, what's it called? Moonshade, moonshade, or whatever, right. uh, on your first two stones, and yeah. you'll never see your ruler's memoria. Or you'll not start with a regalia, and you'll see all your ruler's memoria. Right, right. <laughs> it just happens. Right. You can't control it. Variance. So don't get pissed about it. Um, just, uh, be like, I can't control that. Nothing I can do about it. Only try and like worry about things in, within your realm of control. Yeah, I think that's huge. I think controlling your emotions is like the number one. I think um, a lot of people, um, they really want to do well. And every time that they don't meet the expectation that they want, yeah, um, they take a lot of blame for it. Especially in a game like Force of Will where there is very low variance there's usually something you did wrong, which is the reason yeah. why you lost, right? Yeah. So th- that's why I like the self-assessment after every match, win or lose, to look at what what did I do? Where did they make a mistake? I think Magic players do this really well. If you watch any video of someone playing Magic online, um, they're gonna make they're they're gonna talk about their plays and they're gonna say, okay, this didn't go out too well for me. Well, what's the appropriate way to play this hand or in this situation? And it's not, oh, of course I got wrecked because I hit double moonshade. It's all right. Well, what's my best option here now that I have double moonshade? I guess I play with this now. And um, you know, you may end up losing to it, which is fine. Like you're saying, shrug it off. You can't control it. But a lot of times we let that get us so emotional that yeah. we end up making other misplays where we might have had the game if we had just focused. Yeah, I can I can point to tons of situations that happened this weekend where I was like, man, if my opponent does this, this, and this, that's <laughs> really bad for me. And they just wouldn't they wouldn't see it, they wouldn't do it. And I was like, whew, that's great. Um, and you know, sometimes that is just you know we're we're tunnel visioned and we 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 got a plan and we stick to the plan and we we can't look outside that plan, right? But uh, maybe that's due to them letting you know, mistake rule their emotions, uh, or maybe, uh, for instance, my round, my round nine opponent, um, he made, we had a 22 minutes worth of extensions. Uh, wow. this is round nine at a, at the 13th hour. Right. So, and we're he's playing Alice's world as well. Right. Right. The Gretel, the Gretel version with like no rulers memoria. Oh, interesting. Uh, and, and he just, he was just, you could see his, his face was turning red. I don't want to, I mean, the guy's a great guy. I'm not going to say his name or whatever, but right. he, uh, he was just getting, and he knows he was getting super flustered. He's right. so tired. Right. Uh, I think he made three different game error violations or whatever, but they're all like different ones. So right. it's no game loss or whatever. But, um, poor guy, we had a crowd around us cause we were like the last match. With the oh, oh, the worst. Not to mention he lost, but he, he, yeah. he lost, but he got in the top eight still. So oh, that's it, was, solid. it was fine. Um, uh, but you just gotta, I don't know what you're supposed to do. I mean, I, I think I'm lucky because I've just been doing, doing magic for so long that I'm just kind of already, already at that level where, you know, I'm not gonna, if a crowd's around me, I'm happy because that's going to affect my opponent more than it's going to affect me. Right, yeah. If a yeah. crowd, if, if, if a mistake is made and we have to call a judge, people are like scared to call judges in this game. <laughs> a lot of the time they're yeah. like, they don't, they're like, they think they're the bad guy if they call a judge. You're not a bad guy if you call a judge. Right. Uh, you, you know, judges are there for a reason. They're to help keep the game clean and to like, mm-hmm. they're good people, not not the enemy. <laughs> right, so, right. Call I them. don't know. Yeah, I think so too. I think, yeah, it is kind of odd that people are, are a little bit nervous to call a judge. I think they feel like that there might be offending the person on the other side of the table or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get that either. Let's call but, a judge. Let's clear this up. Let's make sure it gets handled correctly. That's yeah. all. I mean, you want the game to run the way it's supposed to run. Yeah, no, exactly. hundred percent. I think all that's like really, really good advice. I think, um, you know, I think if people just were to listen to this kind of stuff and um, they really put into practice just the self-awareness 
um, and just seeing where they can improve um, after every game, even if they win. A lot of times you make a critical misplay. I'm sure this happened to you <laughs> many of times where you make something real, a really bad misplay, but you still end up just squeezing out the win. And you're like, oh, yeah. like I should have been punished hard for that. Very lucky. <laughs> right? <laughs> you, feel, you feel great. I mean, you don't feel great, but you feel like a uh, uh, burden is left off your shoulders when you're like, oh my gosh, I just threw it away. Right. Why did I tutor for, you know, this Alice's World? Three of my creatures just died. I can never cast it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, when it doesn't, when you still pull it out, even though, and that's part of the deck. Like, the deck is super hard to play, but so good that even if you make like, the third best play every turn, mm -hmm. it's still a fine. Like you're still gonna do quite well. Yeah. So Absolutely. I don't know. I highly endorse playing the deck. Alice even if, but but you need to like practice just the dexterity of like putting three <laughs> cards on bottom or right. drawing three cards, putting them like Morgiana with any draw ability. You gotta practice right. all that stuff just so when you go to the tournament for the first time you're not taking a twelve minute turn. Um, right. Yeah, you just can't do that. Yep, and that's why you don't see me playing <laughs> any games right now, man. I just cannot. It's too much. It's like, put what on the bottom, what on top? I have, huh, huh? I'm just like all confused. and yeah, keep track of it all. My face gets red and I get sweaty. And I'm very emotional <laughs> about about what I'm doing. I'm not even like worried that I'm losing. I'm just like, I forget how many cards I have in my hand at this moment. <laughs> You're <laughs> like, embarrassed. Oh. Right, I'm embarrassed. I'm like, God, yeah. they're looking at me freaking out. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Yeah, he's out of control. 11 cards in his hand. Yeah, but he might be good, right? <laughs> like, that's a and I wear a tavern shirt, right? Just, I mean, repping the brand and they think I'm incredible incredible but i'm not and um <laughs> and I, just, I get sweaty and then i, I don't do well <laughs> yeah so. i'm actually curious is that i mean i've only been to now two agps and the first agp was the one in houston yeah uh, where tavern i think had just been born honestly yeah so like when i started playing the, i don't know if we're getting too far off if you no, want no, to no, no, that's fine stop it but uh i started playing this game right at the agp providence like right okay. then i didn't go to yeah. it that was the week i started playing okay i almost went to providence right. the week i started playing to play and okay. the reason was i'm like i, I for magic I, I read tons of articles and right. watch tons of coverage yeah uh, and i for forcible that week i was watching all the forcible coverage i could find right. i went to twitch tv looked up you know arg live and mm -hmm. F fow us tcg yeah. or whatever it's called on twitch yeah looked at their past broadcasts I tried to go to those websites. I tried to go to YouTube. I just, I, I went and tried to watch every bit of coverage from all the GPs that had happened. I'm like, okay, I'm watching these coverage. First of all, the coverage in its, is in its infancy. So I understand yeah. it's not great right now. Right. Uh, hopefully that grows and gets better. Yes. Um, maybe we can hire some casters. I don't know what we right. can do, but um, that's a problem for another day. Regardless, the coverage, watching the people play, I was like, these people are okay, but I think I'm, probably could play this game even though i just learned it this week i think i'm like at least as good as these people like right. not to toot my own horn but i'm like right. i think i could but I, at the time i was like i shouldn't just you know go to providence it's 10 hours away right, right, but i kind of right. wanted to but i didn't okay so yeah. i waited a couple weeks till the Dow the houston one yeah and that was the first time i saw i was like reading articles there was the website what j activate and void and moon which right. both are not quite a thing anymore right. so yeah. but i had just discovered the website FOW Tavern that week. Boom. <laughs> uh, and then I went there and I saw one person with the tavern shirt. You know who the person was? <laughs> Brian Lou. Wearing... Brian Lou! Yeah. There he is, the man. The only person wearing a tavern shirt. I said, hey man, I like your guys' website. And he's yeah. like, hey man, thanks. Yeah. And funny. then he forgot who I was. Oh, until, dude. I guess, you know, maybe yeah. the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I was there too. I also had a shirt on. You missed You me. had a tavern shirt as well? Absolutely. I always, did not see you. Always right in tavern. Yeah, we were we were pretty small back then. Um, Providence. It's interesting because like, so Providence was MOA, right? So um, it was Thanks really so. it was at that this random little set, and it was right before like the Bahamut blast, right? So mm -hmm. there was like this really kind of it was a cool meta. Like I wish that lasted a little bit longer because six sages were a thing. Um, Stephanie Shaw, I think, got top three at that event. Maybe she won that yeah, thing. She was playing Pandora. She was playing Pandora, right? So there's like, it was a really cool format. I, I wish people got to play it more, but it was funny because um, when I started the website, which was a, a little bit before then, um, all my writers at this point had dropped out. And oh. um, so all I had was Brian Liu, who I, who I met at um, AGP in, or excuse me, it was WGP back then. Oh yeah. In, uh, in LA. So in Anaheim, yeah. 
and we had met there. I asked him to do a video. He said yes, and then he wanted to like, come on and, and play as a team. I was like, yeah, sure, why not? And that's where I met Brian, and I was actually all the coverage of like people's tournament reports and people um, uh, doing like interviews and stuff. That was all me. I would call people and I would say, okay, so what happened round one? I would type up their tournament report because I knew people are just, they just don't do it. They're slow. So yeah. I'm like, I need to get content out quick. So I actually spend like an hour on the phone typing out their whole thing. And then I post it. And, uh, for like two weeks that happened. Um, and that's when like websites like J activate and void mood, they weren't posting any content. So it was like every day there were two articles from Tavern. So by the time I came to Houston, we, we, we were decently known, like a lot of people were coming to our site. Um, and then, Right after Houston, we picked up Quinn Kotecki. I think right before Houston, we had Zach um, started doing his podcast for us, um, him okay. and uh, Carlos. And then we picked up Zach on the team uh, right after that as well. So then, like, Houston was kind of the big moment. Um, you know, Brian Lou got third place, got him to Worlds. Um, that was kind of like the – probably a big yep. tipping point in the history. Did you pick up Anton then too, or was that later? A little bit later. Yeah, a little bit later. He got, up. what, second there? Yeah, he got second there. And He's then, the one that knocked – Knocked me out of that tournament. I heard. And you got your yeah. revenge. <laughs> I did get my revenge, right. though I didn't knock. I mean, thank goodness. I didn't want to knock him out of this tournament. Right. It was actually kind of a another, you know, we're just jamming everywhere. But it was, right, a, fine. It, it was a perfect storm, this tournament, because yeah. um, I actually drew in round one, me and my opponent, uh, which is funny. Right. Uh, but he was playing an Alice's World variant with no Alice's World. You know how, like, you just yeah. run all the same creatures, but you don't run the world? Right. It's actually fine. Uh, but it just took too long, um, and probably because I hadn't actually played in a Force World tournament for, right. <laughs> I don't know, six months. Right. But um, but Anton won, I think, six straight before he drew. Yeah. Uh, and so for one round, we were in the same bracket, and we there's only oh, like wow. four people in that bracket. We were right. both, I think, we were both like five oh one, and we luckily missed each other that round. Um, and then at that point, there was only I think one XO, and I got paired up to him, and Anton got paired down, because someone had to, has to go up. Right. When, when there's one XO, it looks for the guy to get paired to that guy. So we knew we, so since we both had the same record, and we were the only two with the same record, but only one person was above us, we like knew we could not get paired. It was so lucky. Ooh. And then me and that guy drew again. I got my second draw right there, and Anton won. So we were again in different brackets. Like It was, it was so like a perfect... Crazy perfect storm um <laughs> for us to both end first and second in the standings yeah. and if you're first and second you're in the opposite part of the brackets right. in top eight it yeah. was just like perfect. everything happened at the right exact time yeah for us to not have to ever battle each other until the <laughs> yeah it's good he was telling me about that and um he was like uh what was he saying um he was talking about how it's so crazy. You guys were in the same bracket, and uh, it was really cool that you were both in the finals because he had not you had uh, he had knocked you out last time, mm -hmm. and he really wanted it to be Dan and Anton in the finals. Um, and he said, "Well, I think what I did to him last year or last time was uh, was worse because <laughs> yeah. he got kicked out, but uh, he he got his revenge on stream. So I think <laughs> I, I think didn't I didn't actually the stream what cut no the, the, the stream cut in the third game." Oh, re oh, that's right. And then I couldn't yeah. watch. I got all scared. Mm, that's what it's happened. Very frustrating. That I did not get to immortalize my victory against him that's on true. stream. But you have you have game one. I, well, yeah, that's unfortunate. But yeah, you did, did you won game one, didn't you? I did, but so not. Great. I mean, did he did he tell you how I won? Yeah, game one? he messed up, but you took advantage of it. So I think that's still a win in your book. It is, you know. <laughs> I mean. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. I, that's kind of a silly mistake, honestly. But I'm sure he felt terrible about it. He did. He like conceded right after the mistake. So <laughs> it's like never mind. He felt so game. bad. Right. He was right. like, I'm so dumb. I concede. <laughs> and then games, you know, he he let me win on the play uh, when he was on the play, which was huge. Yeah, that's huge. So great for me. Yeah. And man. then he pumpkin witched me out in game two, and then it's not visible, but I pumpkin witched him out in game three. So yeah. So there you go, pumpkin witch. Pumpkin witch was his card. It wasn't. He was. He told me to put it in the deck. There you go. I beat him with it. So that's that what, I mean, that's what he gets, right? I mean, that's like Should've everyone's worst nightmare, right? That everyone's worst nightmare. Oh, yeah, I told this guy that I have Pumpkin Witch, and anyway, yep. I think it's yep. good. And then he just savages you with the car. You're like, no, why did I tell This exact situation happened to me. Uh, the Magic, the Gathering Grand Prix that I, I top-aided, uh, 
I, I conceded to a friend to get him into the top eight. Right. Because uh, my record was so, and this, this is legal in Magic. You can draw, you can concede, you can do whatever you want, as long as you don't like offer your opponent any money right. or whatever for the thing. So I conceded to a friend in the t- t- to get him into the top eight. Uh, and then we had to play in the top eight for the first round, and he beat me the first game. Oh, no. uh, thank, thank goodness I won the second two games, because if I had let him into the top eight and then lost to him, I would have been so upset. <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't have showed my emotion. Right, because you're just you're very calm, <laughs> cool. <laughs> you're collected. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, people like us, Dan, you see how I did that? I grouped myself in with, like, the good yeah. players. It's a good tactic. You the, can group yourself however you like. <laughs> yes, I can. That, that I have learned. <laughs> Uh, the thing, the, yeah, the thing about us, Dan, people like us, um, we just think at a higher level. Sure. Right? And uh, I think that's what gets us far. And, you know, Anton, great guy, but I wouldn't group him in with us. I wouldn't yeah. group him in. And He's I'm gonna, never AGP. Yeah. <laughs> WGP or whatever GP. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. But if there's a GP and a letter before it, Anton has no yeah. clue, right? He's gone. Second place, though. I'm going to get an angry message from Anton about the, the ending smack talk of <laughs> this video. And I think sure it'll be solid. Well, Dan, hey, I appreciate it. I appreciate the time today. Um, we went a little longer, but I think people enjoy that. So um, you have a lot of good stuff to say. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, man. Thanks, thanks for coming on. on. Absolutely. Anytime. All right, All right everybody. Um, I'm going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your days. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Go to bed.